Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to my summer wrap up for 2018 and 19. This was an amazing reading for my summer, but um, I did do two sets of reading over the three months. One would be the Cloak and Dagger Christmas readathon, of which there is a wrap up, so I'll be going very briefly over the books that I read in December. And then, of course, leading into late January, most of February, I read a lot of the Adelaide Writers Week books, of which I've also done a wrap up and some mini reviews. So those ones I'll just briefly gloss over. But in total, I read 31 books for summer, and it was an amazing experience. I had so many great books that I've read and even though I'm already well into autumn I am still riding a high of amazing reading so let's get into it straight away and start with December. The first book I read in December was The Unexpected Inheritance of Detective Chopra by Vasim Khan. Now I do not have this book I borrowed it from the library I will put a picture of it right here but it was a really interesting book it's set in India and it's about a retired detective who inherits a baby elephant who he calls Baby Ganesh and has to go on a bit of a hunt to find out what's going wrong in his old, old haunt, <laughs> old police haunt. And it really is a good book to set up the series. It's, it's um, not a standalone great mystery. It's a really good prequel, I would say. So that one I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next I read The Twelve Clues of Christmas. I buddy read this with the beautiful Kate Howe. This is written by Reese Bowen and it is number six, I believe, in her Lady Spiner series. And it was absolutely brilliant, good fun. I absolutely loved this book. It was so much different to the other ones. There was really great character progression in this and also the mystery itself was top notch. I did not guess what was happening because usually I can guess in the other ones. So this one I gave five stars because it was just such a great buddy read and it was such a great book. Next I read Forces of Nature by Jane Harper. This is the second in the Aaron Falk se um, series. I believe it's a series. The first one being The Dry. This one is not on the same level as The Dry but it was a really really good beautiful use of atmosphere and it's quite chilling and haunting when you take a forest and make it horribly distracting because obviously bushwalking in Australia can be quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing and this is a work company who do not know what they're doing. So I gave this one four out of five stars. Next was a really great surprise for me, first time I started reading this series, and that is A Few Right Thinking Men by Sulari Gentil is following the Roland Sinclair mysteries. Now this has been out for a while in Australia and I am, they've just had a cover rebranding and that's how it caught my attention. But I am quite shocked with myself for not picking this up sooner because it is set in 1930s Australia, it's really incredibly detailed and it was just such an amazing backstory and you learnt so much about Australia in that time but also had a really good mystery alongside it. So it is really interesting and it's a really great read, beautifully written. I highly recommend it for anyone who wants to get out of the 1930s America, New York and London and get more into the um, further Antipodean uh, society of the 1930s. So definitely a great read. So definitely worthy of a 4 to 4.5 stars. Next was my breakfast book club pick and that was Brit Marie Was Here by Frederick Buckman. I will have a picture up here. I do not have this book any longer. I did sell it um, to a secondhand bookstore. But I, I did enjoy this book. I think I was expecting a lot more. I was on the level of an unexpected pilgrimage of Harold Fry. It is about a woman whose um, husband has died and she's never really done anything for herself or anything outside of her husband and he was a very dominant character. So she starts to want to not be invisible anymore and she starts to want to not die alone. Um, so she gets out into the community and starts helping a, a town that has basically been running it, run into the ground and she starts to bring back the community centre again. So it's a lovely story. I think the character connection was a little bit lacking and so it did end up being a 3 to 3.5 star for me. Next was The Coroner's Lunch by Colin Cotterell. Uh, this was set in Loud um, just after the revolution, so I'm thinking late 70s, mid to late 70s. And it was really good because the main character, he's old, he's a previous coroner, he's working in the new government and it's not really what he fought in the revolution for. And it's just a very intriguing read. Although it did kind of lose me three quarters of the way in where it kind of went off on a random tangent. And... Um, yeah, it, it was a very odd 
odd book by the end of it but I really enjoyed the start of it and the mystery kind of wrapped up really quickly for me. So this one I gave a solid three stars out of five. Next was the absolutely ginormous but brilliant Treachery of Spies by Amanda Scott. This one I gave a solid five stars. It is brilliant. It's about spies. There's a woman who used to be part of the French resistance in her 90s is killed in a car and so you follow a female detective who's recently suffered a great trauma but is now back at work and you see her trying to chase down what happened within this resistance group within the countryside of France absolutely brilliant I loved it I loved it so much it had a dual narrative it worked it was so well and it kept the tension it just kept building and building you would it it was good I loved it five stars definitely recommend to anyone who wants a great female-led crime slash spy thriller next was another Australian crime read and that was a uh, resurrection Bay by Emma Visnick this one I gave uh, three and a half to four stars um, it was really good although I found it very difficult to connect with the main character he was he was too self involved if that can make a relevant complaint because he wasn't really looking at the mystery it kind of just happened and then he's like had all these personal problems that kind of overshadowed everything and then he kind of got back to the mystery so the mystery itself was really great it's set in Melbourne it was really compelling the character though oh, I just I couldn't the character really killed it in a way for me but I still want to read the next one because if the character development furthers on from where he was stuck in that moment um, and the mystery is on the same level I think I will enjoy it. Next we have The Ruin by Devla McTerran and this was a 4 to 4.5 star read for me. It's really really brilliant. It's a detective Cormac Riley and he finds there's a little bit of corruption going on in the police force but then there's this other backstory where this man gets murdered and he's actually associated with some run runaway children because they were in an ab abusive family and the laws in Ireland have changed from um, always trying to keep the family together even at the detriment of the children to changing what is best for the children and a supportive environment. So this one stunning it was really really well done and the second book The Scholar has just come out which I'm probably going to devour very quickly I think. So lastly for December and finishing off my Cloak and Dagger Christmas readathon was Urn Burial by Kerry Greenwood. This is a Franny Fisher murder mystery series and I loved it. It was so much fun. It was really, really good and this was more of a closed house mystery. So um, she usually writes Franny Fisher much in the style of a Lord Peter Whimsey series, um, although that is not my favourite. This one is written in more of an Agatha Christie style and it was really good just a really refreshing change from the usual style for a Franny Fisher so absolutely loved this one and it had a really good tension in it not within just a racial tension within the um, house and guests but then of course the tension to murder and who did it and everyone's trapped in this place so thoroughly enjoyed Okay, let's jump straight into January. Starting off, I did a palette cleanse of a romance book called His Saint by Lucy Lennox. I've read a few in her series before. It was actually really fun to get back into that, that, that family, the, the wild family, I believe they're called. Um, it was really good, but it wasn't as good as some of the others in the series, so I gave it a three stars. Next, though, was A Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. This was brilliant. I thought it was going to be really hard. I put it off for a while because... In my brain, nothing can compare to A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. That was a stunning YA read, historical fiction, and also unique, diverse voices and LGBTQI. Um, this one, though, it was amazing. It was basically on the same level. It had the same level of detail to the characters, um, but it, they're all female. They all have different... It's not like all female pursuits, so really, she was really exploring how women can differ and really be different in nearly every single aspect, but still friends and still supporting each other. So that was really amazing. I loved that element of this book, but it is a really fantastic YA. I can't recommend it enough. I think I already have recommended it on here, but this was a solid like 4.5 to 5 stars for me. It was, I loved it. It was so good. Next, I read with the lovely Kate Howell, Sydney Chambers and The Perils of the Night, which is the next like, vignette collection of Sydney Chambers' Grandchester Mysteries. I really enjoyed it. The last one kind of let it down for me, though. I gave it about a three stars because I, whilst I did really enjoy it, it's much better than the TV series. Um, the last one let it down because it was a bit of a suddenly a spy thriller um, and rushed some of the ending really quickly. So I think he was 
jumping a ford quite a lot so it was it was really enjoyable i really love the character of sydney in the book compared to the actual tv show and i love the character progression and where he's taking the story in the books i think it was done so much better than the tv series so definitely recommend that one um and both kate and i really loved it next was my other book club read and that was everything i know about love by dolly alderton I haven't read a biography like Dolly's before. I've already always read like either a history figure or someone in politics and things like that. But this was exceptionally excellent. I really enjoyed this read. I gave it four out of five. I thought it was quite different to what I normally read. And it was about how Dolly's idea of love changed from when she was, you know, middle teen and she was trying developing had this idea of romantic love and where I was going into early 20s and what love meant for her and then into her late 20s and she was struggling with that self-identity and really struggling to become who she was and then it kind of culminates when she's nearly 30 she's nearly at that point and it just she's kind of embraced that moment of self-love and realizing that the most ultimate form of love is loving yourself and actually supporting and being confident in who you are and therefore that would be carry you through the rest of life so it was just such a stunning book and I think it was really great for me because while she was like I think she's about the same age as me I could see that progression I definitely didn't ha not have as many issues in like confrontation things that she had growing up but it's just quite interesting to see that you do look back at your 20s and you see at different points it's like oh I felt I felt more mature I felt more of myself I felt more like this and you feel you become slowly more and more comfortable in who you are and your ideas as you go through your 20s and that's what I thought this book illustrated so well and it's it illust allowed you to realize that you can love yourself it is not deemed selfish it is important and it is healthy so that's what I really enjoyed about this book it, but it was still a really enjoyable quick read next I jumped straight back into fiction especially middle grade with Wondersmith by Jessica Townsend um, this was actually the second book in the Morrigan Crow series I loved loved Nevermore. Um, it was so much fun. This one I don't think was on the same level of high because I'd already been introduced to Nevermore and all the quirky characters but I really liked the progression for Morrigan. I thought it was a really good progression into that first year and um, to see everything that happened for her and everything that was slowly transforming and how she was adapting and they were adapting to her status. So I thought it was a really great next book in the series, but I'm just dying to read the next one. I just, I need it. I need it so much. Hopefully it's coming out this year again in October. Please, 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 Jessica Townsend, because I am in love with the series. I don't read much middle grade, but this is definitely inspiring me to do so. Next, I read Jade City by Fonda Lee for my sci-fi um, book club. It was a really great read. Unfortunately, I was sick for the actual uh, book club day, um, but it was a really interesting read. I only gave it three out of five stars um, because they were just lacking in the characters. The characters, see, I am a reader of characters. But if anything tells you from this wrap-up, I love my characters. So yeah, this one, it wasn't developed enough in the characters the idea of the society and the like it's like a magic ninja arts like gangster like meets a godfather kind of thing it was great i loved that aspect of it but it was just so male orientated and it was just you know there's two main female characters and one of them was always feeling like oh what should i do within the um, society so you know should i take this role that was set out for me which is the most path passive role within the leadership or should I just like do my own thing and um, whilst that was good to have that like character who wanted a female character who wanted that auton autonomy she, yeah, she didn't, really didn't develop anywhere um, the other one was the opposing gang leader and she was like psychotic so you had like nearly no female characters in there and I felt there was like a, a big lack in that so it definitely wasn't my favorite 
uh, sci-fi fantasy I've read for the group but it was very good. Next of course I went to something absolutely beautiful in summary and that is The Lark by E. Nesbitt. This was actually really lovely. It was just such a beautiful story. It's set in 1919 when two girls come into a form of inheritance and they set about and they have to basically make a living for themselves and they don't know what to do but they know they want to stay together. So they start to decide to sell flowers and do all these different things to make a living and make their way in the world and you know there are some suitors that come along but they are ma mainly focused on being independent women so that's why I love this book especially because when it was written it's looking for, at young women who are looking at becoming more independent within their own station so that's what I loved and it, it was just a beautiful summary light read that I can just recommend to everyone especially if you love like the Anna Green Gables and those lovely stories this is definitely within that vein. So next I read The Messenger by Marcus Zuzak. I've done a review on this one I'll leave it linked down below but I gave it 3.75 out of 5. It was a very good read. Next I buddy read with the lovely Kate Howe The Vault by Ruth Rendell. This was this was a good read. I did enjoy it, um, but I felt like I read The Sight for Sore Eyes with Kate Howe as well, and we loved it. It was so good. And so this one, it was really interesting to start with, but then his personal life got so much in the way that there was just like a real rush of the mystery after, and it's like, ooh, I've worked it out. And I love the ones where, you know, you can work it out with them, or I I'm not a fan of the Sherlock detective where he just goes off and works it out and you're supposed to be left clueless at his brilliance. So, yeah, it did feel a little bit like that and it wasn't my favourite, although I do need to read some more Ruth Rendell. So it ended up getting 3.5 out of 5 for me. And lastly, another Adelaide Writers Week read was The Lost Man by Jane Harper. This one I gave 4.5 to 5 out of 5 stars because it was brilliant. It was really, really great thriller. There's very minimal uh, detective or police presence, so it just has a heightened sense of dread around every corner. And of course, she managed to use the atmosphere in this to the T. It is amazing. Okay, so we're moving straight into February and the last month of summer, and I started it with The Children's House. Another Adelaide Writers Week read, this one I gave five stars to, brilliant, loved it, writing is beautiful, nearly every sentence is so be beautifully crafted it could be quotes all over my wall. It was stunning. I recommend this thoroughly to everyone who just wants to have a beautiful read about trauma, loss and family. It's, it's gorgeous. Next was My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinka Braithwaite. This is set in Lagos. I gave it three out of five stars. It wasn't my favourite Adelaide Writers Week read, but it was definitely incredibly intriguing. Next was Prize Fighter by Future D. Fidel. This one I gave 3.5 to 4 stars out of 5. It was a really interesting refugee story and about the trauma that uh, people go through. It's not so much about boxing, it's about how there's a challenge to overcome things in life and even in boxing there is a opponent you must face and it's very metaphorical about how he must face himself and face his past. So it was a really interesting read and Future D. Fidel was lovely to meet. So I read Any Ordinary Day by Lee Sales. I will show a picture right here. This is a non-fiction. I gave it four stars. Lee Sales was at Adelaide Writers Week but I didn't get the copy signed. Um, I really did enjoy it because it's looking at communal grief when someone suffers a trauma, how they how they deal with different levels of grief. So she actually went around and interviewed a lot of people within the community and how different people who've suffered massive traumas that have, have been part of the at, um, that have been part of Australian news cycle. She interviewed them to see how they evolved from that and different elements of their grief. Um, it was really, really interesting because she starts the story from a very personal point of grief and trauma and then she works through it from there. So it was a really beautifully crafted non-fiction and it really makes you address how you respond to different concepts of grief and different viewing of grief within the community. After that I read The Snake, The Crocodile and The Dog by Elizabeth Peters. I read this with the lovely Kate Howe. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. This was another Mealy Peabody mystery that I was really excited to get into because I haven't read one for a while and oh, she's just so much fun. Amelia is just such a wonderful character to read and um, this story was really great because it kind of took them back to when they 
first went to Egypt together back to the same area and uh, Ramses wasn't there, their son and their new um, adopted daughter almost, not quite, but their new charge was left back in England so they could get some education. Of course Ramses is besotted with her so he stayed as well. And it was just really great to just have Emerson and Amelia go off on the travels together and of course hijinks always ensue after that, but it was just so much fun. After that I read Washington Black by Essie Eugenie this one was fantastic. I gave it five stars. Highly recommend. I've done a review of it. I'll leave a link down below. Check that out for more information. After that I needed a little bit of a break from all my Adelaide Writers Week reading and so I read the graphic novel Bloom. This is by Kevin Pancetta and Savannah um, Ganchal. This was really beautiful. It's about two men and they're both finished university or they're going through university and they're really trying to discover where they want to go in life and what they want to do and it's it's just the joy of home and family and things like when you think you need to move away um, what really you're giving up because obviously after you finish high school there's this need to become an individual and um, most people do that at the expense of family and friends and home and different things like that so that was a really interesting concept to be developed and also there's a romance in there so that was a really lovely book I gave it um, three and a half to four out of five Next, I read also a graphic novel, just keeping that uh, train going. It was um, Heartstopper by Alice Oshman. This was so cute. High school, two, guy, two boy, boy meets boy. It is just <sighs> adorable. I can't wait. This is only volume one where, the, you know, Bloom was like the whole story in one. So you got the whole, whole picture. This is only volume one and I'm like dying for volume two. I cannot wait for it to come out. But it was really, really lovely. It was such a sweet beginning. And of course there's going to be those tensions and everything within a school system and within people openly becoming gay. Um, but yeah, it was a really lovely read. I highly recommend it if you just want a really sweet interlude between some fiction reading. Next was Trent Dalton's Boy Swallows Universe. This has won lots of prizes. I've done a review of it. Check it out down below. Five out of five stars brilliant absolutely brilliant read and it really makes you think about all the possibilities that you have in the world not just when you're young not just when you're growing up but there's always countless possibilities within your own universe so it's brilliant I loved it next part of book club I read Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman this was quite a good read I gave a 3.75 out of 5 it wasn't something that blew me away but there was like a bit of a shock towards the end and it was really good for addressing in popular fiction um, issues of mental illness and it did that very very well and I thought it was very well perceived throughout the book so I highly recommend it for anyone who wants something that you know challenges their conceptions in a, in a way um, I wouldn't say it's absolutely standout brilliant but I did really enjoy it and I think it was one that the book club really enjoyed as well and lastly oh last book that is Andrew Miller's Now We Shall Be Entirely Free it is set in the Regency era during the Napoleonic Wars and is so much fun. It was really, really great to read. I've, well, I've got it on my wrap up just down below if you want to check out what I, I've kind of gone into detail about it, but I gave it four to 4.5. It was so much fun. All right, so I know I'm gonna have a brilliant uh, list for my April wrap ups because I've already had a five star read for the month, but I hope you enjoyed my summer wrap up. Let me know what books you read over the winter slash summer period, wherever you may be, and I wish you all happy reading for the coming season, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.